Derek Gibner joined by the always annoying Matt Rose as we talk about the $225,000 Dan Patchett Hoosier Park on Friday, August the 14th. There's a full field of 10. A lot of the hard hitters here coming back from the Meadowlands. They're going to compete in this great race here. $25,000 guaranteed Superfecta pool is in the race. And we're going to look at our tickets for that later today. But we're going to start with the field. The number one is Snitchel. Snitzel, do something. Help me with this name, Matt. Schnitzel do something. Uh, I think it's pretty easy to say once you get used to it. Uh, maybe not as, hard, as easy to spell. Uh, yeah, it's a, a decent five-year-old uh, horse that's uh, kind of been a fringe player with the top uh, age pacers uh, this year and last season. Uh, you're getting Scotty Zeron on the bike to drive tonight, which is an interesting driver change. But you know what? It kind of looks like an outsider in this bulky field. I imagine him getting buried somewhere mid-pack, uh, maybe uh, at a price could shake, shake free underneath on the tickets. But uh, I don't see him being much of a factor in this event. Number two is Century Farrow. He's been right there in just about every single start. Four seconds, a win, and a third and seven starts this year. Coming out of the Sam McKee, which we'll watch a, a little bit later. We're going to watch that video. He was charging home from the back of the pack. This guy brings an honest effort every single week. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's another one who uh, definitely flies under the radar. He's uh, banked plenty of coin the last two seasons uh, for his Canadian connections, uh, Ian Moore as a trainer. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see in a minute how he flew home in the Sam McKee, and he can do it. Uh, he can grind. He can come from way off the pace. Uh, we've seen him cut miles in the past. Uh, Dave Miller uh, sticks with him, and um, from this post, I see him as a – as a major player here and a potential win candidate for sure. Number three is Better's Wish. He had at least six a couple starts back, and it clearly it helped because last time in the McKee, he was absolutely spectacular. We're going to take a look at the McKee and pick it up right around the half where Better's Wish is kind of going at it here uh, with with Dancing Lou. Uh, yeah, I mean, he basically – uh, what a spectacular mile to 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 win at 147.3. Basically, this is the only point of the race where he had any breathing room uh, when he was able to sneak sneak away at the top of the field. He felt pressure pretty much every step of the mile uh, after being aggressively handled to take control. And you see Dexter Dunn going to work here. And this 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 guy, I guess I guess it took a couple of weeks for the Lasix uh, to kick in, uh, but you can see him under urging here and. Uh, pretty safely holding the field at bay. I mean, uh, uh, obviously, as they're narrowing in, uh, there's a little anxious moments, but just just a great, great effort for this four-year-old. And uh, uh, morning line favorite and, like, hard not to use on your tickets. I mean, this is also a perfect perfect post. Uh, Dexter Dunn has a ton of options, and, and he's, he's likely the favorite and a must-use uh, on our tickets, without a doubt. The four is this is the plan. He's actually getting to go on the gate this week. Last time in the McKee, he started in the second tier. Now he has post position number four. Are we going to see Yannick Jinger gun this guy out? Yeah, you know what? I kind of like him here as a price. I think he's uh, uh, one of the better of the the handful of uh, Ron Burke trainees in this in this race. And we got Yannick Jinger from a good post. And you know what? If he can get somewhere around this 15 to 1 morning line, which he probably will because there are – other legit options in this race. Uh, I like him a lot in this spot, and he's definitely he, he's prominently placed on my tickets. Uh, um, definitely in the third spot, and I might even sneak a few tickets with him in the second spot to try to get some value. But uh, yeah, I do like this. I do like this spot. Like you mentioned, uh, being on the gate gives Yannick Jingra much uh, a lot more options, and uh, wouldn't shock me at all to see him trip out, you know, and be right there at the wire. 12 to 1 on the morning line is number five, working on a mystery. We saw him in the graduate, was a very good second place finish between behind Hurricane Emperor, where he kind of came up the inside list. He missed basically four weeks of action, came back last time, was a good second behind Black Hole, who was also in the graduate series and another top horse. You know, he looks like he fits in this field. Yeah, you know what? The, the Brian Brown trainee is a. Uh, uh was was tabbed to be a top three-year-old and then had some great efforts last year but also i guess some well-documented problems and uh, when this guy's on his game uh he's proven he's as good or as talented uh, as anyone in here and 
Yeah, I, I mean, the time off doesn't really concern me that much, uh, or the the missed time or gaps, you can say, in his uh, racing schedule. But uh, while I'm not in love with him on my tickets, I can definitely see how people can can look in his direction uh, for this uh, very talented Brian Brown trainee. The six is Backstreet Shadow. We saw him in the Sam McKee. He was the host that was closing in on Better's Wish. Didn't miss by much, only missed by about a neck. He basically shows up. He's another one. Seems to show up every week. He doesn't always hit the board per se, but he gives a solid effort. And uh, Tim Tietrich chose him over working on a mystery here. Uh, yeah, this is a, the Ron Burke trainee has a ton of tactical speed, which always sets him up with good trips. Uh, sometimes not always the best finisher, but that was a, uh, after sitting the trip, uh, last start in the Sam McKee, uh, was right there at the wire. But uh, he's, like I said, he, he's a good candidate to get a perfect trip, but sometimes a little bit lacking late. And I think he's got to show maybe a little bit more late stamina to get that extra little push, maybe to get him, to get him, to get him home. Numbers seven, eight, and nine, Dorsodoro Hanover, Dale Cialis, Dale, Filibuster Hanover, three Ron Burke trainees. I would say Dorsodoro Hanover seems to be in maybe the slightly better form for me, at least, even though Filibuster Hanover is coming off a win. I think the outside post is going to put him in a bad spot. But all three of these are going to be pretty much long shots. Yeah, just uh, uh, the horses to his inside, especially with Backstreet Shadow, another Burke trainee. Directly who's inside, who he assumes is going to be forwardly placed. These these three guys are all in, in tough spots. If I had to choose, I'm in agreement. If I had to choose one of them to sneak onto a ticket, uh, logically it would be Dorsa Doro Hanover, just having the post edge. I don't see De Los Cielos Deo. I think I said that right. Uh, I don't see him getting involved at any point during the race. And Filibuster Hanover, you gotta you got to imagine he's getting away last. Although he was a solid winner last week after saving ground uh, in, this, in the San Mikey Constellation probably just too far to come in this spot before we move on to our picks and our superfecta tickets the 10 is our major dan a was yeah. unbelievable a few starts back and uh, i thought a little disappointing his last two starts yeah well I, I know i know you've been a big fan of this guy we saw his first start at the metal ends when he broke at the gate at the start uh bounced back with a, a, a monstrous effort uh, after that uh, we saw him go a wicked, uh, I think I mentioned that when we discussed last week, almost like thoroughbred-type uh, fractions. Uh, and then last week, yeah, maybe a little disappointing. And I know this guy has some issues, especially at the gate, and I know that Dave Miller picked off him, and I know that starting in the second tier, it might be a little tricky for him if he's not on the gate. But all those things said, uh, this guy's attracted a lot of paramutual attention, does he get overlooked tonight? Uh, do we get a nice price on him? I say yes, and, and I'm going to actually kind of lean in his direction. And I think the talent is there. And uh, maybe with a little bit of luck and a little and some manners, uh, he could pull off an upset. Well, we went through the whole field. Now let's take a look at uh, where I decided to go with my super effective ticket here. And uh, you can see right there, I went with Century Power and working on the mystery on top. For me, working on a mystery is my top pick in here. The time off, the four weeks was scheduled. Basically, Brian Brown told me, you know, at the graduate that he was looking at, you know, taking some time off. It wasn't going to start for a while. So I'm not really worried about it at all. I think this horse is every bit as good as every other horse in this race. 12 to 1 morning line. If we get 8 to 1, I'd be thrilled. Century Farrow, just another horse who brings his top effort every single week, was charging hard late last time. He's right there every single time. And I don't see why either of these horses – are that far behind Better's Wish, who's had a ship all the way out from the Meadowlands, six days out from his last start, was used really hard last time, could certainly bounce. Uh, I mean, I, I see using him. I think we could beat him. So I went with the two and the five on top. You see two, three, five, six with two, three, five, six, and then a spread on the bottom. It's only a $6 play. Matt, how did you see it? <laughs> uh, I kind of shortened up uh, uh, on the – on the in the top couple of spots, I'm using Better's Wish on top, and I'm using Our Major Dan on top. Uh, looking for a price with with, with Our Major Dan. I, I think uh, I'm not I'm not worried about uh, uh, Dave Miller opting off or getting the uh, this Andrew McCarthy guy who seems to be running kind of hot recently. Um, 
if I can get somewhere around 10 to 1 on him, I'd be happy. Uh, I'm going to use better's wish. I'm not concerned. I'm not as concerned as like the the six days out or shipping out or stuff like that. I got to believe that uh, Chris Ryder is a sharp enough a trainer to, to, to have this horse uh, overcome those obstacles. Uh, I'm going to use Century Pharaoh with those two horses in the second spot. I don't see how you don't use that horse. Uh, spread a little bit using this as a plan for a price. Backstreet Shadow in the third spot. Uh, Backstreet Shadow, though, I'm not in love. Uh, I'm not in love with them on the win end. I think just with, like I mentioned, tactical speed. And then I'll go on all in the bottom spot. And I believe it's uh, $8.40, if I did the math right, uh, for a 10 cent play. It's certainly reasonable. Uh, but I mean, yeah, if I, if I'm looking at double digits with our major Dan, uh, I'll take a stab and just hope that the, the trickiness of the second tier, uh, considering this horse's past issues around the gate is not a problem. You know what? And maybe after seeing him with rugged fractions on the front end, maybe, maybe off the pace tactics, uh, will 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 work in his advantage. I mean, clearly he's going to be off the pace here. You know what? Maybe not being on the front end facing pressure will be better for him. So. You know, I'll just use those. I'll use those variables, and, and I hope that uh, you know the double-digit price that uh, you know that we can we can we can scare home a winner here. Well, Matt's going with the favorite, along with our major Dan. I'm going with this guy what working on a mystery pick, uh, and uh, that's Peter Park Friday night, August 14th. The Dan Patch Stakes, 225,000. Really nice card. You want to check it out? Good luck.